choosing your budget on Google Ads, or what people still refer to as Google AdWords, hence why we titled the video this for SEO reasons. But regardless, I'm gonna go through nine questions that you must ask yourself to decide what is the right daily budget, weekly budget, or monthly budget, or even annual budget for you on Google AdWords, or Google Ads as it is now called, okay? The reason this is important is because you definitely don't wanna just blindly go into Google AdWords without any thought put into budget. Budget is the fuel for success for your Google Ads campaign, okay? You need to operate with intention on Google Ads in order to see success. So, let's go to the bare bones uh, piece of information that everything is based around on Google Ads. And that starts with cost per click, or CPC, okay? So, it all starts, that's why it's called PPC, pay per click. It all starts with a cost per click, right? So you are going to bid on specific keywords and people who type in the keywords that you're bidding on are going to see an ad and between one to 10% of the people who see your ads are gonna click on them. And every time someone clicks on them, if it's not an invalid click or a fraudulent click that you refute, you're gonna spend money on, okay? And a percentage of the people who click on your ad are going to submit their information on the page that they are sent to from that ad, whether that is the home page of your website, which not good, or a targeted landing page that is relevant to the ad they clicked on, that's good, and that will be a higher conversion rate. Uh, the average conversion rate that we've found with the campaigns that we run is about 20% but that is not to purchase. That is to a for lead generation for a lead who's expressing interest, right? Um, so there's gonna be a percentage of people who click on your ads that then convert into a lead or a sale if you're doing e-commerce, and then there's gonna be a percentage of people if you're not doing e-commerce who uh, become a lead, call you for more information as an example, and then become a client. So you have to be clear on your percentages and you have to be confident in three things before you go and commit to an astronomical budget, okay? Number one is targeted traffic. If you are confident that the way your campaign is set up is gonna get your ads in front of targeted traffic versus broad strokes traffic, okay? If you're confident in targeted traffic, then that's A plus, okay? The next one is you have to be confident in your landing pages, okay? What, what do I mean by that? You need to be confident in your ability to convert a click into a lead or potentially a sale if you do e-commerce, okay? And then the third one, if you're not doing e-commerce again, is how confident are you in your sales system, okay? So that's how, how good are you at converting people into sales, repeat sales, et cetera, okay? So we have three components, targeted traffic, conversion ability or landing page, and then sales system or you know, what we call lead to sale conversion rate. So if you're confident, if you have faith in these three things, then that's a good thing. Now, since everything starts from the cost per click end of things, you want to start by going to Google's keyword planner uh, or going on SpyFu or SEMrush and looking at what your competitors are paying per click, okay? That will give you a ballpark range as to what the cost per click is in your market and in your niche, okay? And then one thing before I go into these nine questions that you need to ask yourself to get clear on your budget, I wanna make one thing clear is if you are looking to spend next to nothing, then you desperately need to expand the time window with which you will uh, audit the results, okay? Because if you're only willing to spend $500 a month or 1,000 or even like somewhere right around 1,000 a month or 2,000 even in some niches, 
it is inevitable that you are going to have some bad months, okay? And I would hate for those bad months as you set up a new campaign uh, to cause you to give up on something that works so well for businesses all across the United States just because you had a couple bad months. So the, the lower your budget, the more you need to expand your mind and look at it in quarters, six month chunks, or even 12 month chunks to see what this is really uh, returning for your company, okay? So here are the nine questions to ask yourself. And I want you to ask yourself these, even if you have to pause the video as we're going along, because it'd be much better use of your time if you implemented right now versus just passively listening to me give you these nine questions. So the first question is, how does this fit, pay-per-click, Google Ads, into your overall marketing strategy? Okay, how does this fit into your overall marketing strategy? If you're doing no marketing and it's just Google Ads, I want you to get clear on that and accept that versus if you already have 40 other lead channels, okay? So that's the first question to ask, okay? The next question is, what are my competitors spending, okay? You can look this up on SpyFu. However, I will warn you, it's spyfu.com, S-P-Y-F-U.com, and you can do a couple free searches on your competitors in your market. You can look at people who are running Google Ads, etc. But understand that SpyFu's data is not always 100% accurate. It can be 50 to 100% off during you know, certain circumstances when you're looking up data. But it allows you to see a little bit of information as to what your competitors are spending online uh, in a comparative fashion. So you can see that competitor X is spending twice as much as competitor Y. And then you can kind of think to yourself, well, how much bigger is competitor X to competitor Y and start your decision-making process that way. So you can use spyfu.com to type in your competitor's URL and see what they're spending online according to spyfu, but take it with a grain of salt. Number two question, again, what are my competitors spending? Number three, <laughs> We already hit on this. Do you have a good sales process, okay? Are you good at converting interest into an actual purchase or signed client or a converted customer? If you are not confident in your sales process, then you need to factor that into your decision making. If you're super confident in your sales process, you should probably spend more on Google Ads, okay? The next one is how many clients or customers are you looking to pull in? every, let's say, quarter or six months. I don't want you to think on month to month terms, okay? It's too short of a time window to be statistically significant. And most times I tell people they need to do a full year at a decent budget to actually see the trends in their industry when using Google Ads, because there's different trends on every advertising platform. How many clients are you looking to generate? Now, if you know your average revenue per client, even if that includes referrals from other attorneys, if you get a certain type of case, that is awesome. Because then you can set benchmarks as to what you're willing to pay for a new client uh, of a particular type of practice area, within a particular practice area. The next one is how much can you risk upfront? And the reason I say this is if you want your Google Ads to work, you're gonna have to invest money in the setup, right? And what I mean by that is you're gonna have to invest money in either building landing pages on your website, hiring someone to do in-depth keyword research so that you're not just going after the highest competition terms in your market. You're gonna have to do some heavy lifting upfront and you're gonna also, for the first two to three months, probably waste money in some areas that you're gonna learn you wasted money on those areas so that you're gonna prevent those mistakes in the future. So it's lessons learned, okay? But nonetheless, if you are on your last dime and you can't risk the upfront investment required to set things up right, uh, both from a landing page perspective and a technical Google ad perspective, then you probably want to not spend as much on that setup process. The next is, are you doing this by yourself 
or are you getting help, okay? If you're, you, if you're doing this by yourself, you may think you're saving money so you can spend more money on the ads, but you're actually costing yourself more money in the long run. If you're getting help from an expert, I don't care if that's a freelancer, a digital marketing company, whatever, you need to factor that into your decision making. Also based on your skill set. If you're not that skilled at Google Ads and you're looking to set up a smart campaign or something that's like set it and forget it, uh, you probably wanna spend less because you're not gonna have that attention to detail and experience to proactively point out where you're wasting money and wasting time, okay? The next one is, are you sending the traffic to a landing page or to your website? This is another huge factor. Uh, I, and when I say website, I mean the homepage of your website. If you're sending all traffic to just some generalized homepage on your website, then you definitely wanna spend less on Google Ads than you would if you had people clicking on ads being sent to very targeted landing pages that are extremely specific to the ad they clicked on. So you need to factor your landing page experience into your decision making on budget. Okay, the next one is what is your geographic area and population density, okay? Now this is extremely important because if you're in the middle of nowhere uh, North Dakota running a campaign, you need to realize that you're not going to be able to spend that much, okay? Now, if you're national, you're going to be able to spend pretty much unlimited budget for most niches unless it's, unless it's such a specific niche that there's not a lot of volume for it. So that'll, that'll tie into our next question, our last one. But what's your ge geographic area and what's your population density? If you're doing a very competitive service in a very competitive major city and there's tons of competing advertisers, you need to understand that your cost per click is gonna be a lot higher than if you're in the middle of nowhere. And the last question is, what is your niche, okay? How competitive, more specifically, is your niche? And the way that you can discover this is you can go on the keyword planner again and just start comparing different industries, not specific segments, but just general industries. If you're a lawyer, for example, you need to understand that's probably gonna be much more competitive than if you're a um, you know, uh, dog trainer, right? Or something where the average client value is a lot smaller um, and uh, it's a little bit less competitive. There's less marketing savvy individuals in a market. So you need to be aware of how competitive is your niche. Okay, so don't be delusional on these nine, on your answers to these nine questions because I can assure you, if you ask yourself these nine questions and reflect on your answers to them and look at the competitors, what they're spending, how this works into your overall marketing strategy and relate this to your goals, you will fall upon a budget, uh, whether that's over a six month time period or 12 month time period, that works for you, okay? So ask yourself these nine questions. My final tip before I sign off here is that uh, my, my advice is always to spend a little bit more than you think you should spend. So when you come up with a number after you gather all this data, the best advice I could give you is to spend a little bit more. If you have the budget, I always suggest this. If you have the budget and you are confident that you are gonna have things set up to get targeted traffic, convert that traffic through landing pages that work, and have a good sales process to convert those leads into opportunities and sales or clients, then I would spend as much as you can in a short window of time to learn quickly what types of leads get pulled in from this? I'm talking like if you can spend, you know, 10 grand in a month, then do it. If you can spend more than that, you know, I would spend as much as you can because even if you break even, okay, even if you break even, you're going to gather such valuable data in the process and lessons as to what your market is doing online when they're searching for someone like you. So, I hope you found this video valuable. We're looking to get the 10,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate if you found this valuable. 
to subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated when we release more valuable information like this in the future. Also, give it a thumbs up if you, uh, if you like the video and leave a comment if you have anything that you want me to make an additional video on or any questions that I left out in this video. Thanks. Thank you.